I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce the sponsors. Sponsors are the lifeblood of social media breakfast. They're what allow us to keep the breakfast free of charge, as well as to fill you up with warm coffee and, and goodies for your tummy first thing in the morning. So I'd like to ask Michelle to come up and speak on behalf of Moonlight Bay Center and tell you what it's all about. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My spot is right here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I'm still winded from the stairs up there, so forgive me. <laughs> have these odd pauses. Um, today I am here representing um, Moonlight Bay Centre, and I am absolutely delighted to uh, share more about it with you. Moonlight Bay Centre is the venue that gives back. It is a beautiful waterfront property on Wabba Moon Lake that is owned and operated by Bissell Centre. And I'm sure that all of you have heard of the Bissell Centre. Its purpose is to give low-income families an opportunity to escape from the city and to engage in activities that kind of enhance their quality of life. So, I'm curious, how many of you have been camping as a kid? Oh, yay, yay, we Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, as I'm learning, I'm very new to this role, and as I'm learning, there are a lot of families, kids, who in fact have never even been outside the city limits. They've never been camping. They've never experienced roasting marshmallows at a campfire. They've never tossed stones into a river. There are a lot more said families in the Edmonton area than we think. And I'm totally shaking like a leaf. <laughs> I'm very excited, I'm very excited. <laughs> Anyways. You're among friends. I know, I know. <laughs> I guess when you uh, represent a institution or an organization that you're passionate about, you so desperately want to do well, right? <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying, there are plenty of families that can't afford these experiences. They might be families who are new to Canada, who are just challenged to make ends meet, or perhaps they're dealing with more complex issues. And finding a roof over their head, finding food is obviously their focus. So whatever circumstances brought these individuals to the Bessel Center, camping is the furthest thing from their mind. However, in 1920, a local businessman donated $300 to, because I can never remember his name, Reverend William Pike of All People's Mission for the purchase of land along with Lake Wabamu, or Wabamu Lake, sorry, uh, for the purchase of to establish a camp facility for the less fortunate to enjoy. Today, Bissell Center's Child and Family Services continue to organize one to five day, all expenses paid outings to Moonlight Bay where they can connect as a family, where they can meet other families, and obviously escape their daily stressful lives. So when the, family, when the uh, facilities aren't being used by business center families, it is available for rent. And all revenue goes back to the family camp programs. And that's why I'm here today. <laughs> this, let's see here. We asked to sponsor uh, today's social media breakfast because we recently rebranded the Moonlight Bay Center. We have a new logo, thanks to Devin, <laughs> a new website, we just started on Instagram. We're revitalizing our Twitter profile, et cetera, et cetera. And we figured of all the audiences, you guys were the obvious one to announce this to. So we are at, at Moonlight Bay CTR. <laughs> the truth is your referral helps. Be they online or <coughs> offline referrals, they help people in need. So, they lead to more exposure of the Moonlight Bay Center, as you well know. They put us in touch with people who are looking to uh, have an outdoor wedding along the beach, along the lake. Maybe they're looking for a venue to have a team building meeting, a yoga wellness re uh, retreat, uh, perhaps, um, what else? Oh, a family reunion, or perhaps <coughs> A family, you guys as a family want to go and, you know, share the camping experiences with your own kids that you had when you were young. So, we're here today to ask you to engage with us, to check out our new website, moonlightbasecenter.org, to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and 
help us spread the word. You're the venue that gives back. <laughs> pictures. It looks absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to stay there. So. so let's get down to business. I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce our speaker, uh, Devin Kornisky. He is pretty well known in the community and I think that is awesome boon for you guys today. We did try to have him out last year uh, with Carmen Joy also presenting on Instagram and we ended up getting Devin's lost tips because the <coughs> session ran long. So now you get a whole session just of Devin. <laughs> um, you might recognize some of Devin's work with his, the Hope Mission. And he has some pretty awesome secrets. I tweeted earlier this week about the um, bird photo with Hope Mission in the background. Uh, there's a really interesting story on how he got that picture to work, but it's pretty amazing. And now he's moved on to, to work with Thistle and, and the good work that they do. He has been in marketing type of roles for the at least about five years and in not-for-profit for more than 10. So as we all know, not-for-profits have shoestrings for budgets and Devin's been able to work some pretty awesome magic and, and increase the profile of those brands uh, and with that has come uh, followers and, and other return on investment. So without further ado, oh, and one more plug. Devin also has a, a business as a, a DJ with his own. <coughs> so for you, you know, as you want to. <laughs> For the reunion at the center. <laughs> um, you can also hit him up, uh, either Devin Kormanisky on Twitter or also Newly Sound on Twitter. That is true. Awesome. So, without further ado, let's give a round of applause for today's speaker. <laughs> so, I spoke. Um, with Carmen Joy last year, and I was just, I just had um, moved on from Hope Mission and was showing examples from Hope Mission's feed. And uh, at that time, I just started a Bissell, Bissell Center account. Uh, so it's neat to be here a little over a year later and um, to be able to show you kind of, I guess, what I've um, done with Bissell Center. And the name, Instagram Snackdown. I have to say, I was half joking when I suggested that, but Jackie loved it. And my first, actually my original idea was Instagram face off. Rip the face off your competition. <laughs> but they didn't, they didn't like it. They didn't think it was uh, the right fit. So, um, okay, so I acknowledge that there's maybe some experts in here uh, as well as beginners. I'll try to uh, speak to both. I'm pretty sure there's going to be relevant information to everybody. And uh, let's see here. So what you can expect is um, a little bit about the why Instagram, uh, a little bit about uh, some planning and strategy, some examples of accounts that I think are pretty cool, and uh, we'll pick apart some photos, and uh, we'll look at some tools and some tips and some, some tricks. So let's, uh, let's get started here. Okay, Instagram has crazy growth. It has surpassed Twitter. Um, in December, Instagram reported uh, 300 million active users, which exceeded uh, Twitter's 28 million. And that was a 50% increase from just nine months prior. So it's crazy fast growth. Um, and I think it's reflected in um, you know, when we ask friends, are you on Twitter? And they sheepishly say, no, no. Or, or they say um, something like, yeah, but I don't really go on there, don't look at my account, it's embarrassing. But, of course, they're all over Instagram. They love it, they're there, most of our friends are there. Um, it's safe to conclude that our, uh, if we are marketing, um, that our target uh, customer, our ideal customer, is there and it's even um, also safe to assume that uh, perhaps our competition are there liking and engaging with their photos so uh, we want to be in that space we want to cut in like we're at a prom dance and we cut in and we say may i have this dance and you just elbow the person i don't know um okay next 
attentive audience. Um, there's no other platform out there that has a, the user's focus. There's no distractions like Facebook with all the stuff on the side and different places to go. It's one stream, one photo at a time. People are really consuming and indulging in each photo. And that's why we see such high engagement on Instagram. So I'm s assuming that nobody's seen that high engagement. That's pretty high. Um, you have to have a really big account for that. But to give you kind of an, an idea, if you have 1,000 followers on Instagram, you should be seeing, on average, 37 likes um, on your photos. So if you're um, coming in under that, then you got to tweak your strategy a little bit. If your, say, average is 50, then you're doing some uh, remarkable stuff. Um, and Twitter. Twitter's kind of crazy. You can have 1,000 followers on Twitter, put out the same photo, compelling message, and sometimes you'll get nothing. But you're guaranteed to get something, some engagement on Instagram. It's got a young user base. 90% uh, of Instagram users are younger than 35. Majority are in the 18 to 30 range. So if it is um, your priority to connect with younger people, uh, then Instagram is the place you want to do that. And for marketers, um, these are your future customers. Uh, if you're an organization, your future donors, perhaps. So um, it's a good place to be. People love brands on Instagram. It's kind of crazy. I am reluctant to follow a brand on Twitter or Facebook because I feel like I'm just going to get marketing messages and sales pitches. But I will follow Oreo or Coke or Nike on Instagram because they're doing really cool stuff. A lot of these brands have figured out how to play within the unwritten rules of Instagram, uh, which is being creative and unique, um, inspiring, uh, speak to the experience rather than just sell. Um, they're doing it really well because they have, uh, I guess, the marketing budget to know what's working. And for us, smaller business, smaller organizations, absolutely look at what big brands are doing um, and um, be inspired by that and see how you can, um, I guess, capitalize on what, what they're doing and th with the research that they've done and the numbers that they're seeing uh, and then make a twist so it's unique to you. It's fun. I go to Instagram because it's relaxing for me as a marketer. <coughs> Facebook stresses me out. Twitter's going so fast. And I go to Instagram and it's actually therapeutic to me. And I feel because of that, I end up doing better work when I start with an Instagram focus. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, some examples of posts that I've created for Instagram and um, using the power of Instagram that I guess forces you to be more creative and think about the image first, uh, how it can translate to success on other platforms. Okay, uh, so I want to do an exercise now. I <laughs> it was really late last night. I'm like, I gotta do something funny. Um, okay, so, and, and my excuse to use a emoji hashtag. So, back to the exercise. Okay, so this exercise I want to do Actually, I can't. This is too distracting. I'm gonna just... <laughs> okay. I'm going to show you a slide, um, a mobile screenshot from Thistle Center's Facebook page. And your challenge is to draw out all the information you can from that. So if you knew nothing about Thistle Center, what can you conclude based on the information you're seeing on one slide on your phone. I'll give you 15 seconds and then I'm hoping for some of you to share what you learned. Poof. That's the sound of it going away. I, that's the, okay, that's the only, <laughs> sorry. I had a hard time finding a good poof. <laughs> That's the only one I could find. It's cute though, it fits with the pink theme. Okay, so anybody, just throw up your hand. Um, what did you learn about Bissell Center? Well, that it was volunteer week. 
Yes. Volunteer week. Any anything else you, that you pulled out? There was the website. Um, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Websites yeah. represented. Anything else? Well, it was fun. Yeah, fun. fun. Let's go back there. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> Okay, so here's just some thoughts. National Volunteer Week, that you, you pull that out from that visual. Uh, there's, you can conclude there's volunteer opportunities and uh, we are appreciating volunteers, things like that, that you're grabbing from that. So um, next, here's a slide from Twitter. Draw out information that you can visually. Poof. What, uh, what did you learn there? Anybody? Sorry? Yes, yeah, yep. Yeah. That was there. Well, I'll just get right into it. Um, inspiration, there was a quote. So Bissell Center is about inspiring. Um, the National Geographic talking about how um, Edmonton was mentioned on the top 10 places for the summer. Uh, so you can co conclude that you know Bissell's um, kind of believes in their city, city pride, and then community-minded. Since uh, the bottom, we retweeted something that NextGen uh, was sharing about. Okay, next, Instagram. What did we learn? Community. Community? Coffee. Coffee. <laughs> Anything else? Feeding people. Sorry? Feeding people? Yeah. You get a chat of addition of who some of the recipients are. Okay. Per, uh, personalized kind of look at who people are. Um, sorry? What's the facility? Yeah. Facility looks like. Improving people's lives. Improving people's lives. Okay. So look at this list. Um, coffee, friendships, meals, family, mothers, nutrition, uh, services specific to Aboriginals, um, volunteering, city pride, thrift store, nursing, partnerships. Let's go back and look. So coffee at the top. You got somebody eating a meal. You got family. You got a uh, mother and a child. You got nutrition with the fruit, coffee. Uh, we got Aboriginal art, so you can conclude there's Aboriginal specific services. There's volunteerism with the, the apron and the bread. There's city pride with showing the bridge. Um, there's, we do updates there on the left. Uh, there's a thrift shop um, in the middle there, and then uh, partnerships with a business door there. So immediately you can see the power of Instagram. That's one. Um, that's a full, just one full screen on your phone. Imagine flipping through with your thumb a few times and what information comes out that quickly. So that's, to me, the power um, of Instagram, how fast it communicates and how deeply it does. And I think um, more than Twitter and Facebook, you got a sense of the identity of Bissell Center, the personality, uh, the spirit and the heart, perhaps. All right, let's um, start with the basics. Um, I know that we're all on Instagram, but it's important to go back and reevaluate um, uh, how we started and, and um, what we should be focused on. So everybody should have some goals. If your goal is brand image, you want to post some cool shiz. And I'm using like hedgehodge type of uh, lingo here. Cool she is. Um, if you want to build community, if that's a goal of yours, you want to do a lot of engagement on Instagram. If you want to drive sales, you want to do some uh, coupons or contests and web traffic, um, some contest type of stuff, which we'll talk about those few things later. But establish why you're there. It's going to help you keep focused on and uh, direct your efforts there. Plan. Okay, so these are sort of suggestions, but also, I mean, it's everybody's uh, got a different situation and different capacity. Um, for me personally, I post about once a week, but I choose to post um, 
high quality left less often. That's kind of my goal. Um, but some, if, if I do have more capacity, um, maybe Michelle helps and we can post twice a week. That's a good goal. Some people post like three times a day, um, maybe too much. But I would aim for once a day, um, two times a week, not bad. Once a week is totally fine. Hashtag, know which hashtags you want to use. <laughs> Write those down, um, have those ready, um, and, and you want to uh, choose the hashtags that are going to um, connect with your target audience. Now these three at the bottom, follow 10 people, new people a day, comment on five posts a day, like 20 to 30 images. These are things that I actually do, and I actually enjoy going to Instagram and just looking through photos, and it's so easy to like a photo, comment on a photo. It's so different than um, Twitter. You feel like you're, you're jumping in on a conversation or you're interrupting someone's conversation. But anybody at any time can make a comment on a photo and it feels natural because we can all appreciate um, what we're seeing there and how that photo is composed. So yeah, like, comment on people's posts and follow new people. Um, I read a blog post that said, if you're not growing on Instagram, you're dying. And that might be true for all uh, social media platforms, but um, following new people is going to help um, you in increase your followers, which we'll talk about. Standards. You need to have some standards because you can do everything and anything. There's a million filters, there's a, a million approaches. Have some standards for yourself. These are some of my standards. I make sure that my photos are bright, they're <laughs> focused, they're crisp, um, they're purposeful. Uh, and when I say focused and purposeful, I mean like there's a point to that photo. There's a story inherently in that rather than, rather than um, you know, too many competing ideas in that one photo. Uh, zero in on something that you can speak to. Uh, and interesting and unique is important in an age where there's so many images online, so much communication going out. You've got to find ways to stand out. And quality over uh, quantity. Well, I think we're past the, the point in social media where, you know, just, just post and, um, you know, you just got to post more often. You got to be the first one to get that post out to get noticed. Everybody's doing that. So it's so noisy out there in social media that the stuff that's going to stand out are the ones that take a little bit more um, time and effort to compose uh, where they are more remarkable rather than just posting because I want to get in the feed. Okay, here's two accounts that I want you guys to look up uh, if you're not already following them. What I love about these two accounts is... Um, it's very deliberate what they do. So let's go back here. Bright, crisp, focused, pur purposeful, interesting, unique. Every image um, has a purpose, but it's also creative. You can see some um, shots with people's feet in it um, and people holding the cup of coffee, I think, over there. And just creative uh, compositions. And What's cool about both of these accounts, you can scroll back and see where they've evolved from. If you go to the beginning of these accounts, they, they don't have uh, too many photos on them. Scroll back and see the difference and where they've evolved to, to have more, um, more standards for what they're posting and the focus and the intentionality of what they're posting. I know on the moonshine, if you go back, it's just really close photos of donuts all like the whole grid is just these donuts and there's kind of a, a yellow a yellow kind of wash over them and and you just over time see uh, their strategy develop okay profile um, these are simple things but you want to go back and examine your profile you want your avatar or your logo to be sharp and centered and just look like you put it in there with care. I see some logos that are stretched out and you're only seeing half of it and they're pixelated. You gotta work that out because it, it speaks to other things in uh, your organization or brand. 
um, handle and name consistent and recognizable. When I say consistent, try to use the same handle across uh, that you use on Twitter as, um, as you do on Instagram. Therefore, you're going to be recognized more. And when you share back, say if you did share back to Instagram, or sorry, to Twitter, um, it, you don't, it doesn't send people to a different account. Uh, bio, passionate and detailed. And URL, you want, I put there, because some people don't put it there. You want, you want a URL there, and you want it to be descriptive. And I'll give you an example here. So this is Poppy Barley. If you look at the logo, centered, crisp, professional. Um, there's some passion in, in the, the bio. Our, our shoes fit better, feel better, and live better. I love that. And then they get um, detailed of what you can expect from their brand with the sizing and the mar multiple um, <coughs> foot and calf widths, ethically made, all good stuff. And then a lot of people are doing this bit.ly link for um, tracking purposes for their URL. And it just says bit.ly yada yada dot com and you don't know where you're going. That's not a good user experience. You want to know where you're going. I'm going to speak a little bit more about what Poppy Boiler is doing with this uh, link here in a bit, but make people know where you're sending them. Build your audience. OK, there's a couple ways to do it. Pursue, you can pursue people. So don't forget to, to go to your location check-ins. Um, and what that is, people will show up, say, example, Bissell Center, and they'll say, uh, they'll put in the location Bissell Center. If you as a user click on Bissell Center, you can see anybody who's posted and tagged that location and you'll find people under there that have maybe showed up at, at your organization or business that you're not fo following or they're not following you. You can engage with them. Uh, photos of you, that's a little section that you can go to. That's people who tag um, you and you can go back and look and um, re-engage with people that have tagged you in the past. Um, followers of related accounts, AKA your competition, go lurk <laughs> on their accounts because, or, or similar businesses. You want to find the people who are most likely to be interested in what you're interested in. So the natural thing to do is go look at uh, the other flower shop's followers <laughs> and uh, see who they are, and perhaps they'd be interested in following you too. This is natural on social media to do. Uh, I highly recommend you do it, because those are the people, I guess the, what you call the driest tinder or the low fr uh, hanging fruit. <laughs> Find those people, engage with them. Um, and search relevant hashtags, whether it's YAG, YAG Downtown, um, or say it's Flowers. Um, you want to find people that are passionate. And my thought is that there are thousands of people out there that would be excited to follow you right now that have no idea that you're on Inst Instagram or that you exist right now. The only thing, and the only reason they're not following you is because you haven't introduced yourself. And you can introduce yourself by following them. And um, hopefully they follow you back. Another thing you can do is comment on a photo first to um, show them that you actually care about their account and then follow. And when you're doing these kind of things, you want to go in a mindset of actually enjoying um, the process. Uh, to succeed on social media, I've found that you got to really um, love social media and love what social media is all about. And it's all about people. And I think we all care and love people. So it's really easy. So when you are following someone to hopefully that they follow you back, that you are truly um, you know, interested in their content as well. And, oop, okay, yeah. So just some hashtags that I threw up that are popular. Um, if you're a local business, you got to go onto these YEG hashtags. These are some of the big ones. Go and engage with people in those spaces. 
um, if you use these popular hashtags like Instagood, which has billions of pictures, you get lost in that mix and you'll get a lot of spammers coming back and saying, I follow back, follow me, follow for follow, all that stuff. You don't want that. Try to build slowly and locally if you're a local business. If you're an online store, maybe it's a little different. You want a universal following. Um, and then the bottom, Instagram Yag and Urban Yag, these groups um, are doing some pretty cool stuff like Insta meets and walks where people get together and they're really um, fostering a community within Instagram and Edmonton. Get discovered. Um, as I talked about, liking and commenting each day and following new people, that puts you out there as an active participant. So go and find some cool photos, say what you love about the photo, contribute something to, to that through a comment, like a bunch of stuff that you, that you really genuinely like, and follow some accounts that, that will make you visible and active. Include hashtags. Uh, and same thing as like looking for hashtags to find people. The ones that you use, you want them to be relevant to your business and um, focused on the Instagram community in Edmonton, especially if you're a local business. And then collaborate. There's some really cool um, things going on with um, collaborations on Instagram. And I'll show you some collaborations uh, soon, but the idea that you're getting in front of each other's audiences and doing it in a way that shows that you're collaborative and community-minded and um, it's, it's good, it's positive. Uh, it makes me think of, say, fast food joints setting up in the same intersection, uh, knowing that there's a common draw there and they can share customers even though they're technically competitors. Um, so collaboration is good um, and don't be afraid to collaborate with what you would consider perhaps your, um, your competition. Buy, you can always buy followers. <laughs> but I don't recommend it. That will ruin your account. Um, anybody who's done that probably regrets it. And um, I think Instagram did a big sweep where they deleted a bunch of these um, accounts that were fake and anybody who's bought and followers, you see their numbers come down dramatically and they're exposed for being uh, someone who buys followers. But if you did buy followers, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay, we still love you. Content, okay. This is, uh, this is the point where I'm gonna start showing you some photos and I'm really excited about it. Uh, but first, the best content is on brand. It, oh man, does it drive me nuts when a small business posts about the Oilers and it has nothing to do with their business. Um, maybe once or twice, that's fine. But, or if it's say relevant, say there's um, your sponsor or something, right? There's some tie. But when you're just like, you know, hockey politics integrated into your business account, that's not a good experience for your followers. Uh, so you want things to be on brand. Um, on trend, trends are important in Instagram, um, even though it feels kind of weird doing them, say whether it's taking photos of your feet and your product and, you know, but these are things that, um, they're trends for a reason. And you want to put your own spin on it. You don't want to be cliche about it. But find a way to, um, like I said, look at some big brands, look at some businesses that are doing some trendy stuff, and put your own spin on it. Um, niche. I'm not sure if that's a real word or not, but niche, 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 niche. So you want to get really niche with your um, your account. If you're a fitness account, you want it to every photo to be about fitness and giving that value to people. Um, and that's gonna you know, th that's gonna br bring those people closer to your brand. And it, think about it for yourselves. Um, whatever you're passionate about, I I'm sure you found an account that's all about that, and you follow it because there's value for you within that, rather than one day it's this, one day it's that. Um, I know that I have a bunch of accounts that I follow um, for graphic design and it's just focused on, zeroed in on that and I follow because I, I know they're going to deliver me what I'm passionate about every time. Um, so that helps. Um, 
as I said, focused, um, have a purpose and a focus to what you're taking a photo of, and useful. This is huge with social media. Um, why do people follow you? Um, especially if they don't know you, they're not friends or family. They, they want something out of that, whether it's inspiration or um, a laugh or actual practical useful tips on something. Find a way to be useful and interesting and inspiring. Okay, let's, uh, let's learn about some of these photos. Um, Okay, this photo is not a photo that I've taken. This uh, is a photo that I found in the archives of Bissell Center, and it's at the thrift shop. So basically what I'm proposing to you, go back into your photo archives, draw out some photos that you can repurpose. It really helps. And I saw this and I immediately, I'm a, I'm a like Jackie said, I have a DJ business, so. I'm a music guy, and I immediately saw an opportunity that was missed. This was in a photo album that could have just been gone. I posted this on our Instagram, and I said, because this is at our thrift shop, right? So Lionel Richie, it was just so perfect. Hello, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> and then I you know, talked a little bit about the thrift shop and whatnot, and it was a beautiful synergy between the content and the photo and something that was kind of a throwaway shot in a group of photos. Go back into your archives, see where you can um, bring back new stuff and, and make it relevant for now. Again, not my photo. So something to learn from here is um, you don't have to post original photos. You make the rules for your account. I choose to do photos that um, that I shoot personally, but also I work with a photographer to uh, enhance um, the account and bring some really special shots that I um, just wouldn't be able to, to grab. Uh, so, but the, 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 I guess the lesson here is get in close. Sometimes getting in close can be more powerful than stepping back and seeing some smiling faces because this speaks to a larger audience, uh, doesn't it? It's, you know, there's power in the simplicity of uh, um, a man and a woman hugging a child. It's, it's, it's beautiful. That could be anybody's child. That could be your child. Um, also, step back. Um, this was a, a homeless woman who's drinking a cup of coffee underneath the sign that says espresso. I was across the street, and I just thought that was, wow, it just struck me. Um, and the, the magnitude of that building towering over her um, says something about perhaps how she feels in the world. So I kind of tied that into to my post. Um, now if I was up close taking a photo, it wouldn't have the same impact. And, um, and I was able to chat with her and put some of that, um, some of that stuff that I draw, um, had drawn out from that conversation into the post as the content. So yeah. Step back. Uh, here's an example of collaborating. I had Carmen Joy, who is a local photographer who spoke last year. Um, I said, Carmen, I love your cat. People love cats. And I want to do this contest with Bamboo Ballroom. Um, can you take a photo uh, for me and send it to me? So she took that. Then I used the Over app, which we could talk about later, to put some text on it. And then connected with Bamboo Ballroom. And um, basically, the idea was, users would take photos of their donated clothing, their clothing that they wanted to donate to Bissell Center, and post it with the hashtag clothes for Bissell. And the idea was to be creative and unique, and we'd pick a winner, and they'd get a $100 gift card to Bamboo Ballroom. So the idea was that there's some cross-promotion, it's community-minded, it's collaborative, it looks good, it feels good, and it's fun for users to post. And um, most people, we're posting shots of their pile of bags of clothing, right? Uh, and there's some creative stuff, but this one really, <laughs> this one won the contest for good reason. And what we can learn from this is putting in extra effort into your photo goes a long way. This is amazing. First of all, you feel like 
mom is hovering over the baby in the kitchen or wherever they are. Like, it's surreal how straight above this photo is taken. So it makes it, this is when I say interesting photos, your, your curiosity is, is going nuts here, right? And then not only that, she wrote on the onesie, clothes for Bissell, and it's a cute baby. And it's just well thought out. To me, this is remarkable. It won for a reason. It will win on Insta, photos like this will win on Instagram as well. And here's uh, another one on the interesting topic. This is a promo shot that I did for the same contest. You're like, wait, what? What the heck is going on here? That's a shadow holding up clothing. Um, and immedi immediately you're like, where's the camera? What, what the heck's going on here? So let's make this a challenge. Where's, this could be like the new, what color is the dress, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where the heck is the camera? is the question. In your hand. In your left hand. Left hand? And you said somebody standing in front of the shadow. Standing in front of the shadow. It's in your hands. It's in my hands. On a lanyard around your neck. <laughs> Close. It's obvious, you guys. You're thinking too much about it. It's duct taped to my chest. No, it's duct taped to my chest. <laughs> I'm telling you. On a self timer, <laughs> duct tape to my chest. So, <laughs> you know. Shots of somebody else taking a picture of you. Do no, you I was completely <laughs> alone. It was super nerdy. I had the duct tape out, and it, it, it took this a lot of effort. Where you ripped the duct tape off. I had a shirt on. It was duct taped to my shirt. <laughs> but yeah, interesting. Stops people. Like, what's going on there? Where's that dang camera? And um, yeah, you kind of think about it, how you can recreate this. It'll be awesome. <coughs> All right, I found this cute doggy once. And this is on my personal feed. And just a beautiful shot, the snow on its face. And I just, I loved how this came out, but there was a huge red um, Canada Post box in the background. I removed it, and it's okay to do that. I didn't have to take it into Photoshop. I used this simple little app on my phone, and it's like magic. Poof, box gone, and it helped the photos, like the focus be where it should be. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. I guess the lesson is, don't be afraid to remove things from your photo so your user can focus on what's important. I'll tell you later. That's coming up. Okay, this is an example of being useful. Um, this is a um, cookbook that you can make meals for under $4 or $4 a day. And um, people really enjoyed this post. Uh, it did well on Facebook as well because uh, there's a free PDF download and um, everybody wants to make good, healthy meals for, uh, for a good price. And, What's neat is it's still on brand for Bissell Center since we work with low-income families. Um, this appeals to, uh, to that demographic of, of people that we work with. So, and a lot of those uh, families are following us on Facebook. So this was shared a lot uh, and liked a lot on our Instagram. So find, uh, highlight things that may be useful to your users. Oh, and another thing about this photo. Notice the lines that strike diagonally. A way to stand out in your feed is to find photos that don't just, you know, have a parallel horizon, a horizontal horizon, because most people shoot like that. Find, and I could have made the lines straight across, but more interesting, have it shoot through the square. Uh, it stands out, it's more interesting, it'll make your feed more interesting. Similar to this, not so dramatic, but photos that have something that um, strike uh, from corner to corner um, stand out. So think about that when you're composing your shot. And this photo is a stray cat. And you might think, what the heck does that have to do with Bissell Center? This is just around the corner from Bissell Center in the inner city. And I tied it in with the messaging about it's tough here in the inner city. Um, this, there's a bunch of little kittens 
um, underneath that this cat was protecting and it just kind of overwhelmed me like wow this is um, complete, completely relatable to the community that we serve there. Um, type. Don't feel you always have to blast it out. Use it subtly and use it cleverly. Um, I put a quote along with this photo and uh, it worked really well. And sometimes you want to be bold with it. You want to be, you know, you want that to like stand out in the feed and stop people. Um, neat thing about this, that's not a stock photo behind. I took the time to go around in the inner city and take photos of fences and uh, doors and stuff that I could use as a backdrop instead of looking at Google for textured backgrounds. It brings more personality, uh, brings more authenticity, and I'll make you feel good about the photo that you created. Okay, this photo Jackie posted, and I shared this last year at my talk, and um, it's quite remarkable. I, I perched myself in this one position for like two hours, framed it up just so and waited and patient <laughs> what it's true patiently waited and this what is it a duck no that's a seagull comes in perfectly and it just snapped it and it was a magical moment really um that's not what happened i found a burrito on the ground i took that burrito and I threw it in the air maybe 30 times while snapping machine gun, <laughs> machine gun style. And eventually I had this wide shot of this bird and I cropped it in and, and I was seen as awesome. Yeah. Like, saw you doing that. We were just having fun. It was all good. They actually, I think somebody was helping. Uh, but literally, beside, be, beyond the crop, there's like a burrito, you can imagine it. It's like somewhere in, on the right there, in the air. So, the message here, <laughs> put in uh, extra effort and uh, take a bunch of shots to get the shot that you want. And same with this shot. I spent, <laughs> A little bit of time taking shot after shot and saying, hey, do that bubble thing again to this little boy and eventually captured the right one. I cropped it in how I wanted and um, it's, it's an awesome photo. I love it. So yeah, take some extra time. Take a bunch of shots and see what you get. Okay, you see a lot of people holding up paper a lot of nonprofits do it, and it was kind of a, a trend uh, a while ago. And it works, but we looked at that idea for this campaign, and we had our thrift shop burned down, and we said, what, what else could we do to, to stand out? So we tried to get into the, the fire site, but because of insurance reasons, we couldn't go in there to grab burnt stuff. So we found some old um, things to go uh, burn in a, someone's backyard. Um, same with this one. So these kind of things add value. Um, take, you know, so easy to write on a piece of paper, but you know, how about finding a piece of wood, burning it, put some extra effort in to stand out. And you'll notice the type on this is almost looks like a font. And what I did was I had somebody hold this and I overlaid with the over app, which I'll talk about later. Um, text how it would lay out nicely um, on there. And then I had that photo next to me with the overlay and then I hand drew with a paint marker as closely as I could so it didn't look like a child did it and it looks you know, pretty elegant. So just kind of a, a trick if you wanna put some type on things in real life. And this is a, um, Jumping on a trending hashtag, Tim Hortons came up with these cups with the hashtag um, warm wishes. And uh, I love these cups, they look like a Christmas sweater. And I got to work and I held it up, took a photo, and then I thought of a simple line. I said, we have warm wishes for our homeless neighbors this winter. And that got 70 likes 
and it took me no time to do, and it tied into something that other people were seeing on their morning coffee. And it also gives a little bit of behind the scenes um, in my office, which helps with um, your brand image and that you're not so serious. And this photo, um, so this is the last snowstorm we had. Um, I went down to the kitchen at Bissell and we had just been donated a bunch of organic apples from Spud uh, Delivers. And I originally took a picture of the box of apples and it just wasn't kind of grabbing me. So I thought, oh, you know, and I actually really didn't want to do this, but uh, I went out onto the roof into the snowstorm, it was super cold, my socks were wet after, and I held this apple up in the contrast of a snowstorm and an apple, which is life and needs sun to, to grow. And it's a Canadian apple, uh, so I, I think I said something about it being uh, resilient, uh, Canadian fruit being resilient or something. Um, and it's just, it's unique, it's interesting, and um, yeah, it garnered a lot of <coughs> likes and attention. So another kind of, um, example of putting extra, extra effort in. And I boosted the saturation on the apple, which, which I'll show you an app where you can isolate, um, isolate colors and uh, tweak them a little bit. All right, so this photo is not my photo. You'll notice on the Bissell Center feed, I like to curate sh really cool shots of Edmonton from general users. I go to the Yegg downtown Hashtag, it's relevant to Bissell Center because it is our community. It's where uh, Bissell Center exists. And um, it really shows that Bissell Center isn't this siloed organization that we're about Edmonton and Edmontonians. I found this shot. It's one of my favorite shots of Edmonton, actually. And I put a quote next to it, that, or underneath, that says, we rise by lifting others. And it is our second most popular shot on our page. The original um, Instagrammer who posted it, he has 30 likes on it. And it's funny because his account is super scattered and all over the place, but he took this remarkable shot and I was able to say, hey, can I use that shot? And um, it garnered uh, 145 likes where the original on his account garnered 30. So that did a few things. Um, it was good engagement on our account but also showed our users that we care about their stuff and we want to highlight them. Find opportunities to do that. You'll build really strong friendships and partners um, by lifting up others. All right, this shot is our most liked shot on Instagram. And this shot couldn't have, uh, maybe wouldn't have happened um, if, let's say, a, a couple minutes went by and I didn't leave the building in time. But I basically was walking to my, uh, my car after work and I had my phone, I was looking up a uh, phone number and I just, I saw this and it's a dad picking up his little, sorry, I have a little girl, so <laughs> it's touching. Uh, I, this dad picking up his little girl from our free, free child care service and it just moved me and I started snapping photos. And of course it moved others. Um, <laughs> it was totally unintentional. And the beauty of it is that it's unintentional. It's not a professional photographer coming in and staging anything. It was a real moment and um, just really cool seeing a, a nurturing father, um, you know, picking up his, his little girl and the compassion uh, that he has his hand on her head like that. It's really cool. Pardon? Even though you can't see his face, did you ask for permission to use that one? We have permission from our families at Bissell Center to um, take pictures of um, them and their children. It's um, something that, yeah, we take quite seriously. So this was posted on our Facebook. And this is an example of creating and building something image first, focused on the story being inherent in the image that will perform really well on other social media platforms. So as you can see, this is one of our most, you know, our best performing Facebook posts. And it's so simple. The messaging isn't um, anything crazy. It's, it's very descriptive of what's happening. The photo really holds the power. And we got a lot of traffic back to our website because of it. 
So find those moments that um, just happen. Be ready to take photos of something that moves you. If it moves you, it's probably going to move others. Okay, let's, let's speed this up. We're talking about the grid. This is important. So there's a few things that are going on here with the Bissell Center grid, um, which are very intentional. And um, not saying this is the only way you, have, you can do it, but this is my process. You'll notice that I separate as much as I can like photos from each other. So you don't have these clusters uh, interrupting your feed when people are consuming your feed as a whole. So you'll notice I, I separate fo uh, people photos when I can by uh, inanimate ob objects. And then I also mix in those shots, those curated shots of Edmonton to bring an airiness to the feed. I really uh, believe in quality over quantity. And I believe people land on your page and they want to scroll through and be able to consume the past content. That should be um, important. Um, so try not to cluster too many darker or um, graphic photos together in one place. Um, and I see the, um, the airy shots and the shots that have lots of white, kind of like um, a paragraph break. When you see a body of text that's just stacked, it's overwhelming. But you see paragraph break, um, it, it allows the user, it allows some air for people to connect to these different things. Sorry. Can you edit the grid or is this your time? You have to be deliberate about it. Once you post, you can't uh, go back. And I'll show you real quickly after this how I am so deliberate about uh, how I can be this deliberate. And then I see the, say, the keep cool volunteer and the, the, the one with the patio uh, and the good and cheap. These ones that are more block heavy and color heavy, I see those as pull quotes. Where, where I see the white and airy uh, open air shots as uh, paragraph breaks, I see those as pull quotes, and an they anchor, anchor your eye as you go through the feed. Um, this, this, is getting, like, this gets pretty nerdy, and like I said, not saying this is the approach you need to take, but this is my process. So when you're scrolling through our feed, it's enjoyable, it's light, and you can connect to these different moments. So, this is what I, I'm going to show you something I call my Graham cave. And this is not something you have to do, but this is something that I do because I'm weird and obsessive and OCD. I have an account called Graham cave. And it's separate from the Bissell Center account, but it mirrors that account. Nobody can see it because it's set to private. And I go in there and I have all the time to post up photos, post up a series of photos, decide whether this photo is too saturated and I want to bring the saturation down, um, or if it just doesn't feel right in the feed. In that place, I can also um, draft um, my content because you can edit now on Instagram. So I have all this time to just sit with what I'm doing without it going live and people seeing it. And especially now that people can follow your account and get um, notifications on your account, once you post, and everybody has done this, and it's like, oh, I don't like that, and you pull it down, everybody's been notified, and they go look that, for that photo, and it's not there, or you've changed it. So it's a weird experience. So I mitigate that by having a separate feed where I can just play within. And what also that does, it allows me, in that account, to follow accounts, um, not for the sake of getting followed back, but I use it as a list. I follow all the accounts that inspire me that have awesome content. So I could go there and go to the news feed on that and just see awesome photo after awesome photo, which gives me ideas and inspiration. Um, so I call it a Graham cave, but really it's just a hidden account where I can play around. Um, I do that on Facebook and Twitter as well if I want to see how something looks, but I don't want to put it live. Instagram tools are awesome, like they've grown a lot even in a year. Use those, uh, brightening, adding some fade. You can do a lot just within the Instagram app itself. Snapseed, you want to go there and use the um, selective, but, uh, choose the selective option. And you can zero in on a single color and actually 
manipulate that color. You can brighten it, take the saturation down. Say if someone's wearing a really bright shirt, you can tweak different elements. Or the apple, I added a little bit saturation, a little bit of saturation just on the apple, not everything else. Do that in Snapseed. Um, jumping to retouch, check this out. That duck, I hate that duck. <laughs> that duck has to go. Be gone, duck. Wow. It's crazy. It's, it's more powerful than Photoshop. You know what? I hate this person's head. <laughs> head, be gone. I don't even like this person. I'm totally serious, Michelle. <laughs> this might distort the doc. Now, if you took the shoes out, would it know to put the deck in there rather than the water? Oh, weird. Okay, we, well, let's take that out. Anyways, you can play around with it. I was actually doing this this morning, and there's another function you can do, you can sample. So watch what happens. You can actually sample the water and erase. You can do the same on the dock. You can actually get rid of this person completely right from your phone. This shows you the power. And when I talked about removing a mailbox, super simple, right? Uh, retouch. Video hands. You want Video hands. The problem with video is you can't brighten it on Instagram or in the Apple native app. Video hands, you can brighten it, you can add filters. It is a really good video app. Just learned about it recently. Sorry? Oh, I'm so sorry. I assume everybody's on iPhone all the time. <laughs> I can't tell you that. Look, look up video hands, hopefully it's for both. Over, always good for putting text over things. Crowdfire, that's where you can actually delete the account, accounts that aren't following you back if you want to prune your, uh, your followers. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you, this is, this is huge. This is huge. Okay, how many people have tried to make paragraph breaks or Googled it, take it into your notes, separate it by one or two, put it back in, and it sometimes works. My last thing I wanna show you is how to actually do it and do it right and do it perfectly. So this is my Graham cave, actually. You get an inside look and I put some encouraging words to myself. <laughs> okay. So look at this, nobody, nobody likes this, it's hard to read, okay? So what we're gonna do is I already have it in my notes. Jackie's coming up here. So you're told to separate the paragraphs and then re-put it back in, but they always, it's, it's very inconsistent. So what you wanna do is you want to make sure that you're butted right up to the period and you drop it down and you drop a dot in it. And I did, th I did this before, so it's all, all of them are butted up and then dropped down. You add a period to each place you wanna separate. Select all, um, copy. I'm gonna look like a huge butthead if this doesn't work. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna replace this with this. So you can see it separated with the period. Then I'll save that. Still there. Awesome. You can leave that, but you don't need to. Go to edit again, and let's remove each period. And it seems like so simple, but I couldn't even find this information anywhere. I just figured it out by playing around. Perfect paragraph breaks. Now the exceptions, if you have an emoji on the end of the paragraph or at the beginning of the paragraph, the paragraphs go back together. If you have quotations or brackets, same thing. 
but if you have a question mark, period, exclamation, it will line break for you. Do I care about analytics and do I use a certain tool to track? Um, basically, you want to see things growing in these areas um, steadily. That's going to tell you you're doing good. The bottom ones are pretty important. Um, this is what I almost didn't get to. Poppy Barley does this thing where rather than doing a bit.ly link where it just tells you how many people click it, they're going, sending you to a landing page where they can track the Google Analytics. Um, so find out what they do. They have some, probably some magic on the back end. But if you click that, it, it mirrors their home page. But it'll, it'll let people know who came from Instagram. Um, analytics for sales. Bamboo Ballroom does this freebie Friday. Um, so people come in and mention the post. And I'm sure they track how many times that happens, how many direct sales from Instagram. Uh, and then going back. Just, you want to see an increase in all of these areas. That's all I have for now. Second row. Uh, running a successful contest. Um, yeah, be very clear about it. Have a good banner. Um, separate those paragraphs and have step one, step two, step three, step four. Very simple um, things or actions for people to do. Um, collaborate with people that always you know, you have multiple people sharing the, the contest, and uh, obviously you need that hashtag that everybody is posting to. Um, and then you, you want to you keep seeding that contest through the social media sites and letting people know for the duration. Don't assume that you posted it once, that everybody knows about it. Final tip, if you have a series of hashtags you like to populate all the time and you have to go back and copy and paste it from a camera roll, you can, and this is iPhone speaking, you can go into your keyboard and go to shortcuts and you can say HT and that's a code for hashtag and it will populate if you're in Instagram on, on where you put your um, description and you put HT you can populate all those hashtags like so quickly without having to go into a different app and copy and paste you can set up multiple say if you're you do food sometimes and you do fashion the other you can do HTFA HTFO and populate these different unique hashtags in a split second awesome so let's give a round of applause for Kevin Thank you.